right. Up and down. Left to right. Side to side. And stop. Left arm across the chest, facing the opposite direction. Switch. 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 Arm behind the head. No pressure on the neck. Switch. 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 Arms straight out, small circles forward. Wider. Wider. All the way. Stop. Reverse. Wider. Wider. And all the way. And stop. Figure eights. Reverse. Forward, and stop. Hips to the left. Stop, to the right. Stop, feet together, hands on the knees, left. Stop, to the right. And stop, palms to the mat. Up, left foot over right, down. Up and switch, down. Back to go up normal, down. And relax. Left foot out. Right leg trailing. Down. Up. Down. Up. Chest and knee. Down. Down. Up and switch. Rear leg down. Up. Down. Up, chest 
नहीं Down. Up. Feet of the mind is wider than shoulder width. Toe touches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Elbows. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three count. Elbows, reach back, and hips. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, Two, three, one, two, and stop. On the push ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Down on your right foot, left foot out, stretching your wrist. Switch. 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 The center. The left. The right. Center. And sit back. Arms out in front, chain the left. One, two, three, four, five. Opposite direction. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three count. One to the left, two to the right, three to the center. Up, down, up, 
up, down, and left foot out, down, up, down. Down. Right. On the back. Up oh, and switch. Down. Up, down, up, down, to the left. Out. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Knees, feet up, hips. Down, feet flat. Down, all the way back. Shoulders. On your back. Crunches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, set, come out. Six count leg lift. Up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, 
three, four, five, six. And relax. Stomach. Show. Sure. And down. Get up. Right. Punching drill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Arms out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Breathing exercise. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And relax. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Punch.
Punch.
Before we begin actual technique, there are certain fundamentals that have to be understood. Fundamentals are using your body properly to overcome resistance, uh, breaking free from resistance. Uh, very uh, important from any gripping position is being able to use your body as a unit. In order to do that, you must concentrate on keeping your elbow close to your body. Every movement that is done with technique should be done in a circular fashion by extending your energy. This is a, a, an isometric exercise, actually. While your arm is in this position, any resistance that you might get from even a very strong person can be overcome with a step. Notice how we're breaking free here through his thumb. After we have broken free, we can enter into several techniques. But watch again here. Notice how I roll my wrist through his thumb and forefinger to break his grip. Very important factor, number one. Also, in using your body, you must use your entire body weight. And you should move everything at once. Again, you can overcome anybody's strength with this technique. We'll proceed to a uh, shoulder grab. When even a strong opponent grasps your shoulder, if you attempt to turn, re relax slightly, if you attempt to turn his arm over like this, it will be impossible, especially for a woman. What you need to do here is press his hand against your body at the shoulder, grasping it firmly. By turning your body and lifting your arm, you can overcome his resistance, break free, and enter into a technique of one kind or another. Also, to overcome your opponent's resistance, there are several nerve centers. There is a nerve center here at the juncture of the elbow. By pressing in this point here, small circle, a little larger than your thumb, by pressing here firmly, you can make your opponent release his grasp. By pressing here on this side, at this juncture here, with your thumb, you can make your opponent drop in his tracks and release the grip. Again. Continuing up the arm, in the center of the bicep, there is also a nerve cluster. By squeezing with your thumb, you can not only resist the, uh, break the grip free from resistance, but you can drop your opponent in his tracks. Continuing, as you go farther up the arm at the juncture where the armpit is, this long muscle here can be grasped firmly. For instance, with a two-hand grab, taking both hands placing it inside and squeezing, you can release your opponent's grip and push them away, regardless of their strength. Properly done. We'll move on to a, a choke. Rather than struggling, you must relax in the grip of the choke. By leaning forward, your head forward, and downward, and then at the last moment, twisting underneath, you can break free of a choke without even using your hands. Again, using your body as a unit. Downward against his thumbs, underneath his arm and wrist, and break free. Hold me very strongly. The stronger he holds you, the easier it is to accomplish this particular technique. An even simpler technique for a woman or a man or even a child from a choke is using a stiffened forefinger. This forefinger must remain straight 
It cannot bend slightly. It must be perfectly straight and supported by your thumb. Place directly into the hollow of his throat. At this hollow here, press in and slightly downward, and you can push even the strongest opponent away with the four fingers. Again. Placing your forefinger here, stiffened, supported by your thumb, press downward and away, and you will find this is a very effective technique for breaking a choke. We will take the uh, choke from the rear, two-hand choke from the rear. This technique, you simply need to step back, bend forward, continue to turn your body, in a fashion and break free of their grip. Again, let's repeat the same technique in a different direction. You will bend forward, turn your body slowly, step back, and break free. Let us continue with a wrist grab. Since the thumb is the weakest part of the hand, no matter how firmly you are grasped, you can break free provided you have the leverage of your entire body. Hold me strongly, please. You notice how I'm rolling my wrist through his grasp. Even though my elbow will come away from my body at the end, I am still using it as leverage to break free, so he cannot hold me. Two hands, please. This is a very secure grasp. And when it's done by someone who's very strong, it's very difficult to escape. However, there is a method. If your opponent is using two hands, why should you not use two hands? Grab here at the fingers. Pull upward through both thumbs, since they are the weakest part of the hand, and break free. Again, please. Downward upward and break free of grasp. Uh, continuing with some of these other uh, uh, nerve and escape techniques, for instance, uh, a common thing is uh, if you, somebody's shaking your hand and uh, the tough guy isn't going to let go. One of the easiest ways of uh, uh, ridding yourself of somebody annoying like that is simply by placing a knuckle on the back of his hand. There's an area the size of a half a dollar here. Place your knuckle in the center of that area and press down, and you'll find there's a very painful response, which will cause your opponent's knees to buckle. You may have to feel around a little bit. It's a small nerve cluster. But anywhere within that half a dollar range, you will find this nerve. And pressure on it is painful. Continuing. Uh, with the hand alone. For instance, any of the fingers can be very painful. It can be used uh, as a come-along technique. For instance, the forefinger will raise a person right off their feet. You must be careful when practicing any of these techniques so you do not break joints. But any one of the fingers pressed upon in this manner thumb and middle finger can be used very simply to make a person stand on their toes from pain. As you follow up, up the arm, this wrist area here contains several nerve clusters, all very painful. Right here in the center of the wrist, there's an area three inches long. Anywhere in this area, you place a knuckle. This knuckle and grasp with your thumb and forefinger forms a fairly tight grip. You need only to press upward and downward to cause intense pain. This, we'll review this, this area right here very, very painful. Placing a knuckle, again, using this knuckle. Placing it here, 
squeezing the thumb and forefinger and with the addition of other fingers. You can force your opponent right off his feet or downward even into a painful hold. There are also clusters of nerves underneath this muscle. This is known as yankyo, this particular technique. By grasping the wrist in this fashion, closing your fingers on it, the root of this forefinger will lift this muscle. Do not bend this finger at all. It must be kept very straight. You need only to turn your body to the side to cause intense pain. Again, as you turn your body to the side, uh, it's very painful, so I will release it slightly. It will lift this muscle and press on the nerve center behind it. And you can control anybody in any way with this particular technique. Common. Somebody, let's say somebody grabs, uh, you're with a young lady, somebody, uh, an old boyfriend grabs her uh, wrist. You want to disengage that grab, but you don't want to hit somebody or start a fight. What you need to do is only press in this manner, press down on the wrist. There's a cluster of nerves right here. Press down, and you will cause that person to either let go quickly, or you will drive them right to their knees. And they will let go. Watch again, please. This area right here, about three inches up from the hand juncture to the wrist, is a nerve cluster. By placing your hand in this fashion, closing your thumb, keeping your finger straight, you must not bend your finger, it does not aid the technique. Press downward, and you will break free any, anyone's grip. Uh, continuing with some of the uh, escapes and pressure points, uh, for instance, the neck contains several very effective pressure points which can be used for breaking free from uh, chokes or upper chest grabs or two-handed lapel grab or whatever. Uh, pressure here with the thumb. Same side, pressure into this hollow just under the chin will force a gag which will instantly release any grip. Simply press in and push and you can push your opponent immediately away from you. Although this is uh, considered to be a dangerous area behind the ear, it is very useful also by pressing your thumb into the hollow just under the lobe. There's a nerve cluster in here that's very effective for uh, breaking free from the grip. These muscles, long muscles between the neck and shoulder, are very effective applying pressure, but you must go underneath the muscle in a clamping fashion. By going underneath the muscle and squeezing, you can get immediate reaction and cause most people will drop immediately to their knees from this technique. But it requires getting underneath the muscle, so you must squeeze firmly here to be effective. Uh, Breaking free of grabs. For instance, a lapel grab, just to break free, using the thumb is a perfect method of breaking free. Take your thumb, place it over the, your hand over his, or, and place your thumb here on their thumb. Press downward. Very effective, very painful. Uh, let's review that. Again, no matter how strong the grip, it's uh, immaterial what strength is used. Place your hand over theirs, your thumb on their thumb, and press firmly downward. Very painful. Matter of fact, this technique used properly can be used as a come along, and you can take a person anywhere 
without their resistance. Very, very painful. Continuing with the upper body, the nose of your opponent is a very effective method of dealing with them. Pressure on the nose with your thumb, pressure backwards will push anyone away from any grip. For instance, grab me tightly by the lapels. By pressing with the web of my finger upward underneath this nose, I can immediately push him backward. This is very, very painful. Not dangerous, not injurious, but very painful and very effective. Again, let me review it. No matter how strong the grip, press against the nose upward and then downward and push your opponent away. Also, the chin is a very effective method to use. By pressing, holding on to your opponent and pressing backward, this hold is used for leverage to give you plenty of pressure underneath their chin. You can push them off balance and down. The reason this works so well is because there is pressure on the back of the neck. And this, uh, this causes a weakness in the body. Continuing with the head. The hair, very effective self-defense. Choke me. Immediately, you can drop any size opponent to the ground with a hair grab. But first, you must understand this, very important. If your opponent knows that you're going to grab their hair, you can pull until the hair comes out, and they will not drop. This must be a sudden, quick action, and it will work very effectively. But if your opponent knows that this is going to occur, they can resist this. But without their knowledge, anywhere on the hair, just pull downward and backward. Again, this forces the neck backward onto a nerve center back here and weakens the entire body. This uh, last area is the eyes. This is very dangerous and only to be used as a last resort. Pressure inward with the thumb, the forefinger, or any of the fingers pressed directly into the eye socket and pushed will be very painful and very effective, but also very dangerous. It can cause someone to lose their sight this way. But again, if it's a dangerous, life-threatening situation, you cannot care. And you can use these very effectively. A thumb pressed firmly in here will be very effective. A finger poked directly into the eye very effective and very dangerous. Again, I must caution you. Jim, approach me, please. Good. The uh, cochiodosa technique, or breathing extension, is one of the most uh, least understood, I believe, techniques in Aikido. It is a very useful tool for building internal strength and key. For instance, when your partner grasps you, <coughs> if their shoulders are locked with strength, you will find that it is very easy to unbalance your partner or opponent by a simple movement of your hips. To begin with, all I need to do is turn my body and extend my energy to tilt them into unbalance. If I want to further develop, I rotate inside his hand, pull in the direction, and push in this direction. Then I can move forward. Pin my opponent for the uh, time it takes to uh, develop. Go ahead. While Jimmy is trying uh, to escape, he's tightening up all these internal muscles here. Very important part of the uh, exercise is to develop these muscles. So <clears throat> you want to hold your opponent or partner down. 
just for a few seconds and then return to your original position. You will find that anyone who uses strength is very easy to unbalance. Grab me again, please. First of all, because they lock their shoulder, the key rises, and it's easy to topple them over. When the key rises up, as it does in almost any person you might encounter on the street, they become top heavy and very easy to unbalance. That's why Aikido's throwing techniques are so powerful looking. Again, hold me strong. Again, easy. Just a small movement of my hips, my upper body. Pivoting on my hips will unbalance him. His arms are locked, his key is raised. Very easy to unbalance him. Another method to unbalance him is simply to move straight in, underneath his arm. And you can thrust him uh, several feet away from you. It becomes a contest only when both are entirely relaxed. If my partner, Jim, relaxes his shoulders, he can grip my wrist strongly, strong Jim, please, but his shoulders are relaxed. This is what is needed in Aikido to be very fluid with your technique. You can maintain strength, but only in your hand, not in your entire arm or body. And at this position, it now becomes a contest between equals. He can resist, I can resist. But only resisting with my hands, the strength of my hands, not in my shoulders. When as soon as I tense my shoulders, or he tenses his, the contest is over. Thank you, Jim. Continuing with the understanding of key, when my partner Jimmy grabs me strongly, straighten your arm, please, Jimmy. Sensei. His entire arm, from shoulder to hand, is locked. So his key has risen upward, and he's very easy to unbalance with a slap to the shoulder. However, if the body is entirely relaxed, as I shall hold Jimmy, I will use the same strength in my hand, as you can see from the color of my fingers that I'm gripping him strongly, yet my entire arm is relaxed, as is the rest of my body. Strength is only in my hand. This is where my mind sends my key to hold him. He cannot pull free. My grip is very strong, yet I am very relaxed. If you watch a master of Aikido, they will always be relaxed. Always relaxed in their performance of technique. This is the only way to truly flow key. Thank you for watching my videotape on Aikido self-defense. I hope it has given you great insight on how to escape from most self-defense situations unharmed. Please practice the techniques carefully and diligently, and they will serve you well. Thank you.